call the meeting to order, if we could, please. We're fortunate this evening to have Pastor Ross Halbersima from New Hope Alliance Church to deliver our invocation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It is my honor. Would you stand for prayer? Almighty Father, the creator of the universe and of this beautiful part of the world that we care for, thank you. You are good in all of your ways. Tonight, as ideas are discussed, as proposals are put forward, may leadership rise to the challenge before them. May uh, you be glorified and pleased with the manner of conversation and the conversation, for ultimately we stand accountable to you. And so may there be blessing not only this evening, but upon the work that comes forth from this evening for the sake of this community. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Mr. Chairman Fisher, you lead us in the pledge, please, sir. Please flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Adoption of the agenda. Mr. Tierney. Mr. Chairman, we do have one item that we would um, propose for your consideration as an amendment. Um, we have a resolution from the Frederick County Public School System requesting a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $28.5 million for construction of the 12th elementary school. Um, due to the amount of the request, if the board chooses to act on this this evening, um, the appropriate action would be to schedule a public hearing for your August 9th meeting. And you're going to insert that where? Um, I would propose we would put it as number four under county officials. Thank you, sir. How would the board like to handle the agenda? Chair to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda with or without the change. Mr. Chairman. Eyes are done. I move that we adopt the agenda without the change. Heard the motion. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any discussion? All right. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. All right. <coughs> Consent agenda. Mr. Tierney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have proposed items A, C, D, E, F, G, O, and P uh, for your consent agenda. Thank you, sir. How would the board like to handle a consent agenda? Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. second. Motion to approve and a second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Consent agenda is adopted. Brings us to citizen comments on agenda items only that are not subject to public hearing. Did anyone sign up? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, our first speaker will be uh, Mr. Alan Morrison regarding the TDR resolution. Thank you, sir. Mr. Morrison. <coughs> Good, e good evening, Alan Marshall from Gainsborough District. Uh, concerning the TDR resolution and changing uh, the use of the TDRs, I'd like to start up with a paraphrase from a popular 1950s movies. It's a fine mess you've got us into, Stanley. And this is my outlook on the TDR process in its entirety. <coughs> if you reject the TDR change, you're liable for lawsuit. If you st stick strictly to the TDR process, down the road, you will be liable for lawsuits because this process leaves so many openings that no one is going to be happy with in long term. TDRs are basically unnecessary as long as you have good zoning. And if we're not going to have any zoning requirements, why do we need a planning department? So, 
The properties that we've had in the county over the years have been grossly insufficient for the cost that have been added to the county as far as services and infrastructure. And with the recent changes that we've had from General Assembly, the problem's getting even worse. This whole process makes the few prosper and the majority suffer the burden. $3.5 million will be taken out of the proper system if this carries through. This is $3.5 million that will have to be made up by the taxpayer because the development will continue, the, the housing units will be constructed, people will move into them, but we will no longer have proffers to offset that. This was done after the fact. The development was approved and then the change to the proffers as a request. My thinking on this is if we make this kind of a change to a agreement, we should start the entire development process over again at ground zero because this is not a minor change, this is a significant change. In this particular case, the TDRs were acquired after the development was approved or very soon after at little or no cost. Easy enough to do by any developer, just go out far enough where land is not likely to be developed anyway, pay a small amount for a TDR, and then offset that with a development that you have already going and set it back off. This forces the burdens that our whole planning process is supposed to shift away from the taxpayer, right back onto the taxpayer. This is something that we need to consider much more in depth than what we have right now. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, Mr. Chairman, is Dave Holliday regarding TDRs. Mr. Holliday. Good evening, lady, gentlemen, and Mr. Chairman. Dave Holliday, Back Creek District. I just want to point out the last 10 to 11 years from the building development standpoint, I don't know that you've had a single rezoning come through. If you have, it have been very few. So I think all of you in the whole county, all of us have been sort of lulled into a sense of complacency that, gee, there's nothing going to happen out there. Well, I point out from the county paperwork, their, their, their statistics and data, 1980 to 1984, four and a half short years, there was 82 rural subdivisions went to record in Frederick County. 7,250 acres. That folks is 11 square miles. We've got 4,000 jobs coming the next year and a half with 3.1% unemployment. It's going to happen again. We've got to put them somewhere. I disagree with Mr. Morrison. I agree with everything he said. There needs to be more study. But I don't agree that it's a loss to the county because they will build in the rural area. And as long as we're offering the farmers by right, and then turn around, don't allow us in the UDA to put the houses where you want, you're going to get an even greater impact down the road, big picture. That's just the way it is. TDR is the only tool you have in the box. PDRs won't work. You get a conservation easement now and again. But TDR is the only tool you have to control the growth, which is your job, and put it where you want. And you've done a hell of a good job with that. I don't, don't say you haven't. If you were to approve, you, you approved Opec and Crossing in 2015, December, and you approved Freedom Manor, January 2016, identical language. So we, in our infinite wisdom, thought <laughs> you would automatically approve Middletown. I thought it was sort of a policy, wasn't a policy set, but it appeared to be heading that way. 
And that's how we priced the subdivision to get a builder in, Middletown's begging for it to come up there. They need the connection fees. So if we pull out of Middletown, it'd be $2 million in sewer and water connections that that piece of the county is gonna have to absorb some other way. In the meantime, you're helping the farmers, you're saving the rural escape, the view sheds, you're following a comprehensive plan, and you're putting the impact where it belongs in the UDA. It costs a whole lot more out in the county. There's plenty of statistics on that. I won't bore you any more tonight. I'll thank you for all you do for the community. For your time tonight, uh, we're gonna re request that you withdraw this until we have more time to work on some data points and uh, further comment. Is that acceptable? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. <clears throat> Anyone else? Uh, yes, our last speaker is Karen Vance uh, regarding TDRs. Ms. Vance. <coughs> Good evening, I'm Karen Vance. Um, I'd just like to say that I'm glad that maybe you're gonna put this off, but I'll go ahead and share my thoughts with you anyway. Um, when I first heard about TDRs, I began some research and uh, they're referred to as um, technique various aspects of this technique referred, was a bit difficult to grasp. I thought technique didn't seem like the right word. It, it's very mild and weak term for such a multifaceted procedure that will have long range effects on people's lives, citizens who now have not a clue about TDRs and they will continue to feel the repercussions when it's put in effect and when they come up and they, they have to face them. You may say, oh, it's just a piece of paper, but I beg to differ. These transfer rights represent people. On the landowner side, on the resident side, ultimately the residents who buy homes on those parcels. And it doesn't stop there. If you do a web on it and really get into it, it is very extensive, the effects. But rather than go into all the pros and cons, the one part I'd like to address is the very present and recognizable detrimental aspect facing Frederick County citizens with these TDRs as they are now presented for your approval. And this is extinguishing the proffers on new residents that are to be built upon TDR obtained parcels. You, the supervisors, are considering allowing developers who buy up and build with TDRs to forego paying the thousands of dollars that your established Frederick County laws already stipulate are required on each new residence. These proffers help set off, set, offset the cost on the county utilities and services. I actually just have two questions for you. Who is going to cover the loss of these proffers? Your answer must be that the loss will be spread to county taxpayers. They can say what they want, but the bottom line, and it's going to be in there someplace, the county taxpayers are going to have to pick up the loss of those thousands. And the second question is, how are the citizens and the voters that put you all in here going to react when they find out that you voted to give up thousands of dollars of money that was legally available to relieve the burden on their tax dollars. So I think it would only be wise to take time to consider, as has been put forth here, what your, consist what your, cont cons what your voters <laughs> um, will think about it and what they think is exactly why you're sitting there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's everyone. All right, thank you, sir. Board of Supervisors comments, are there any? One? <clears throat> All right. So county officials, committee appointments. A number of them. Uh, Board of Building Appeals, do we have anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Historic Resources Advisory Board. Chairman, there's a Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, Board of Building Appeals, okay. April. Mr. Whitaker. 
We have an application from Mr. Dawson, I mean Ms. Dawson. I'm sorry. So how would the board like to handle this one? So Mr. Chairman? Yes. I made the application, I made the application for Ms. Dawson for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay, the, the, this, this current one is building appeals. So maybe we should delay, is that? Nope. If you can give me a second, Mr. Chairman. Surely. Don't have zoning it's, appeals. It's building appeals. It is, okay. It's building appeals Sorry, only. Uh, building appeals. Okay. So, so Mr. Chairman, um, I made the recommendation for Kay, for Kay Dawson. I sent a um, critique on her background. I sent each of you a memo. She has been president at the top of Virginia. She is a contractor. She has a good and extensive resume, and I'd like to move that she um, be appointed. I've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. The second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ms. Dawson is appointed to the Board of Building Appeals. Historic Resources Advisory Board, OPECAN. Uh, we're still working on that one, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Historic Resources Advisory Board, Gainsborough. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I spoke with Mr. O'Neill, and he's willing to serve another term. Okay. So I'd like to place his name and nomination to be reappointed. We've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Mr. David O'Neill is reappointed to the Historic Resources Advisory Board. Uh, Planning Commission, Roger Thomas Opekin. Uh, yes, I spoke with Mr. Uh, Thomas, and he is willing to serve again in that capacity. And I would uh, so move that we approve his uh, willingness to serve. Motion to reappoint is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Roger L. Thomas reappointed to Peckin District Representative of the Planning Commission. Um, Shawnee Land Sanitary District Advisory Board. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mrs. Smith has indicated a willingness to continue to serve on that committee. I think she has done a, a, an admirable job serving on that committee. As you know, we've been through several contentious issues. Um, she has been able to keep committee focused on what has to be done, so things are good accomplished. So I would recommend reappointment of Lynn Smith to the Shawnee Land Sanitary District Advisory <coughs> Committee. Okay, we've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second, second Mr. Chairman. Second, is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Just for the record, I do think that the Shawnee Land should have their own, have the opportunity to vote as opposed to an appointment. So it's nothing against Mrs. Schmidt, but I think the process is something that I would, I think the Shawnee Land would be better represented by having the voters determine who represents them. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Nay. One, Lynn Schmidt is reappointed to Shawnee Land Sanitary District Advisory Committee. Conservation Easement Authority, um, I've left the message for Ms. Kearns and I'm sure we'll hear back from her. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might, I did talk to Ms. Kearns and, she, Outstanding. and she's willing to be reappointed, so I would so move. Outstanding. And second. Second, is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. We've reappointed Diane Kearns Conservation Easement Authority. Frederick Winchester Service Authority. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've spoken with both Mr. Jones and uh, Mr. Wilkins III. Both are willing to be reappointed. Uh, Mr. Wilkins uh, III would require uh, to join approval, so it'll need the city council. Yes. But I would so move for reappointment of both uh, those gentlemen. I'll reappoint Mr. Jones and recommend um, Mr. Wilkins to the city council? Yes. Okay, you've heard the motion, is there a second? Second. And a second, is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right, we'll appoint one and recommend one. I think that brings us to the end of the list. So that brings us to a series of public hearings Pursuant to Virginia Code 15.2-1800 regarding the final proposals of conveyances of interest in real property owned by the county. Is staff participating? Okay. 
So the first of those is the Virginia Department of Transportation of Fee Simple Interest in an area of approximately 9,160 square feet, 0.21 acres, and a temporary construction easement over an area of approximately 6,833 square feet, 0.157 acres, a fee simple area constituting portions of and the easement area being over portions of tax parcel numbers 65C-1-B, 65C-1-C, 65C-1-G, and 65C-1-H and a fee simple interest by quick claim in any area currently used as the right of way of Sulphur Springs Road, Route 655, adjacent to such parcels. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposal? Anyone? And we'll close the public comment portion of the meeting. How would the board like to handle this one? Move for approval of the conveyance. And second. Motion to approve and a second. Is there any further discussion? Question. Sir. Um, may I ask Mr. Bishop a question? Surely. Mr. Bishop, on page 148, sorry. <clears throat> I looked on page 148 of the proposal, there was a, there was a map which was, seemed a lot bigger than that. So can you just tell us what what parcel you're looking at on Sensony Road? What, you know, can you do? Sorry, I'm gonna have to defer to uh, Mr. Wilder. This is, uh, as as landfill property, this has been coming up through the Public Works Department. I have not been specifically involved in this particular conveyance. Okay. He's joining us. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to know where Mr. Wilder this is on Sensony. I saw the map, but the map didn't seem to convey, at least to me, what parcel you're talking about. So, if you are on Sulphur Spring Road coming from 50, heading yep. towards the landfill, yep. there's some parcels of land that we still own that were part of the old dump. Um, are they beyond, have you passed Greenwood yet or not? No, sir. This is okay. about a half a mile past getting on Sulphur Spring from Route okay. 50. I can picture that. And there's a couple tracks there that we still own a, of land. So, this is just giving VDOT the right of way to be able to expand Sulphur Spring in those areas. Okay, so you know where the house is with the cash for how, you know, halfway down, is that, is that about where Yeah, there used to be, uh, the Marshall Williams place used to be there, and then there's an entrance that goes back to yeah. Plain Crazy. It's right in that area. So you're just giving up that land to VDOT? To, okay, thank you. And the, we as Frederick County owns oh. Okay, any other discussion? Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, how would the board like to handle this one? There have been a motion and a second. I'm sorry, I thought we had a motion. We did. Okay, so any further questions? All right, Supervisor Ewing. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Supervisor Fisher. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Number two is to Rappahannock Electric Cooperative, a permanent utility easement over an area of approximately 5,473 square feet, 0.126 acres. The easement area being over portions of tax, tax parcel number 65C-1-B, 65C-1-C, 65C-1-G, and 65C-1-H. The same parcels as in the first one. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed action? Anyone? All right, we'll close the public comment portion. Board. Move for the conveyance, Mr. Chairman. Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. And a second, is there any discussion? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Three is to Verizon Inc., to Verizon Virginia Inc., a permanent utility easement over an area of approximately 5,473 square feet, 0.126 acres. The easement area being over portions of tax parcel numbers 65C-1-B, 65C-1-C, 65C-1-G, 
and 65C-1-H. Again, the same parcel numbers. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed easement? Anyone? And we'll close the public comment portion. How would the board like to handle this one? Move for approval of the conveyance to Verizon. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And a second. Is there any discussion? Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Four is to the Virginia Department of Transportation, a fee simple interest in an area of approximately 44,384 square feet, 1.019 acres, the area being a portion of tax parcel number 65-A-104, Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed fee simple interest? Anyone at all? We'll close the public comment portion. How would the board like to handle this one? Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. And lastly, number five, Verizon Virginia Inc, a permanent utility easement over an area of approximately 21,029 uh, square feet, 0.483 acres. The area being over a portion of tax parcel number 65-A-104. The same parcel is in the earlier one. Um, would anyone like to comment concerning this permanent easement? Anyone? And we'll close the public comment portion. How would the board like to handle this one? Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Is there any discussion? Supervisor Ewing. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Supervisor Fisher. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. All the proposed conveyances are in the Shawnee Magisterial District and for the purposes of improvement to Shawnee Springs Road, State Route 655, State Highway Project 0655-034-274, RW201, M501, Parcel 010 and 015, UPC 59259. All right, we thank you. Brings us to planning commission business, proposed abandonment of public roads, security drive. Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. As you may recall, uh, back in September of 2016, the board issued a resolution uh, requesting VDOT adopt security drive into the state system. However, after that, uh, our local Navy Federal uh, Credit Union branch or not branch really, uh, operation center, which is there, was selected for a significant expansion, which of course has received a, a, a significant attention in the past uh, six months or so. However, the impact of that was that that proposed expansion impacts that roadway. Specifically, portion of their building is on top of the cul-de-sac of that road. So what that led staff to need to do was follow up with VDOT and say, hey, VDOT, we need, to, we need to slow things down since it had not been fully through VDOT's system. It was not fully in the system yet. So we were able to, to halt that process. So that's what we did. And now we're into kind of the follow-up exercise, which of which step one is this agenda item, which is to advertise your intent to abandon a portion of security drive, and, but also to, to um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, process a resolution rescinding your previous resolution. That's a requirement of VDOT, and that's why we're going through this process. Now, step two of that process is your next agenda item in which you, are av you have advertised to convey that portion of right away which you are abandoning back to Navy Federal Credit Union. 
And finally, step three, which will be a future agenda item in which we will resubmit to VDOT the remaining section of Sulphur Springs Road for adoption into the state system. Now, if you'll take a look to your left, we have a simple location map which shows the Navy Federal Campus as it, not even as it stands today because they're actually already working hard on their parking deck addition out there. But uh, if I may do a little drawing on here for you. Here you have Independence Drive, Route 50 over there, and right here is Security Drive. Security Drive is surrounded on all sides by Navy Federal Credit Union property with the exception of this piece, which is Southern Air. <coughs> now if we'll get a little bit more up close and personal with Security Drive itself, what you see here is the primary portion of Security Drive, which is still shown uh, as my little drawing tool doesn't want to open back up. Here we go. As regular right away, and then this lower section, which is hashed out, is the portion we're discussing this evening for abandonment. And then that's just a zoom in of that piece. So as I noted earlier, that would be your first action, which is the resolution which is in your packet, in which case you would state your intent to abandon, but also to rescind your previous resolution which requested that the, this piece of roadway go into the state system. Thank you, sir. Questions for Mr. Bishop? Anyone? Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed? Anyone? All right, we'll close the public comment portion. How would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve a resolution for the rescission of previous request for VDOT to adopt security drive and partial abandonment of roadway. I've heard the motion, is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And the second, is there any discussion? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. All right, the second part is proposed conveyance to Navy Federal Credit Union of a fee simple interest. Mr. Bishop. Yes, sir, as noted earlier, this is step two of your process on the, in the same process in which I just described in which you would be conveying that portion of property which you just took an action on back to Navy Federal Credit Union. Uh, this property would be rejoining, joining or rejoining as it were, parcel 64-11-11. And once again, I have the same graphics available for your reference. Thank you, sir. Questions of Mr. Bishop? Thank you. It's a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed conveyance to Navy Federal Credit? Mr. Holliday. I just got the, John, VDOT's sticklers, are they going to require a new cul-de-sac? And if so, who's going to build it? That's actually a good question. There's actually, in this case, not a new cul-de-sac required. There's actually an easement that is being provided. It's actually already shown here, which would allow for the turnaround of VDOT snow removal equipment, which is actually the primary reason why cul-de-sacs and hammerheads are required in these situations. VDOT's already agreed to the scenario. Okay. Questions of Mr. Bishop? Are there any further questions or comments Still a public hearing. Anyone? All right. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this one? Move for approval of the conveyance to Navy Federal Credit of this portion of secure, uh, security drive. Motion to approve the conveyance. Is there a second? Second. And the second, is there any discussion? Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. 
Thank you. That brings us to rezoning 03-17. Ms. Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is an application to rezone 49.23 acres from the M1 Light Industrial District to the B2 Business General District and M1 District with proffers. Now of that 49 acres, there's 22.16 acres that is proposed to go from the M1 district to the B2 district with proffers, and then 27.07 acres from the M1 district to the M1 district with revised proffers. Now this property was originally rezoned back in 2001, and then it was revised in 2004 and 2007. Now just for location, the property fronts on the southeast side of Market Street and the north side of Milton Ray Drive within the Rutherford Crossing development. If I can direct you to the screen on your left, you have Martinsburg Pike, which is Route 11 North, and you have Market and Merchant Streets, and then Milton Ray Drive, and then you have the railroad and Interstate 81. Now the subject properties are outlined in black. The portion intended to go to the B2 district is this piece here, and then the portion across the rail is, can, will continue to be M1. The property is within the limits of the sewer water service area and the Northeast Land Use Plan of the 2035 Comprehensive Plan. Now, I would note that the comp plan identifies the property with an industrial land use designation, but I would note that that was reflective of the current zoning that's been on the property since 2001. So staff would note that the property is adjacent to commercial zoning within Rutherford Crossing on two sides, as well as residential zoning on another side, and that residential is planned future commercial. So that therefore the request for a portion of the site to be converted to the B2 district uh, could be acceptable. And as I stated, the remainder of the property on the opposite side of the, of the rail would continue to remain M1. Now the proffers associated with the rezoning are consistent with the obligations from the past rezonings. First there is the um, cap of the 1.24 million uh, square feet of building area. They're dedicating Route 37 and there's a requirement for a TIA for future site plans that exceed the cap of 26,652 uh, trips a day. <clears throat> and that's calculated for the total acreage of the Rutherford Crossing development and that's consistent with the past rezonings. And they've also pro uh, proffered a monetary contribution of 10 cents per building square foot to fire and rescue. So with that, the Planning Commission did recommend approval at their June 7th meeting. And following the public hearing tonight, staff is seeking a decision on this uh, requested rezoning. I would be glad to answer any questions. And Mr. Evan Wyatt is here on behalf of the application. Thank you, ma'am. Questions, Ms. Perkins? Supervisor Dunn. Ms. Perkins, um, to the east of this potential, so currently on this rezoning, it is, reso it is a open area and residential, is that correct? I'm talking about the east of the railroad, the blue area. Just to scale that, okay. You have this portion of the property, which is the FEMA site. You have the bulk of the Rutherford Crossing development, which is your lows and your target. Uh, this portion is all M1 and then you have existing residential all along Martinsburg Pike. To the east of that, okay. what is the expected future use if known at the moment? The reason I ask the question is to the east of that, I believe you have uh, a, a Civil War battlefield. And I'm curious if you have had any comments from those that are interested in history, either for or against us. Do they say, fine, we accept this going forward? Or has there been concerns? I know that part of the battlefield has been um, destroyed, part of it is not. And so I'm just asking on whether there, you've had any input from those right. concerned parties. As far as this rezoning, no, we have not had any comments. Um, with the past rezonings, the only um, historical integrity left on that property was where they um, constructed the monuments, which you can access um, through the development. It's actually on the Lidl property. Um, but the majority of the, of the rest of the remainder of the property has lost integrity for the battlefield um, limits. So the majority of your, of your preserved battlefield is a good distance from the site. And, the, and that was when this zoning or was that in the previous rezonings where, in the previous rezonings in, in 2005 and seven, et cetera, 
Was there any concern at that point in time or not, or don't you know? It was originally brought up with the 2001, because that's when the bulk of the property all switched zoning. Um, it was something that was discussed, however, it wasn't a detriment to the rezoning approval at the time. So those people that were interested in that did not object? To the best of your I'd have to, to, the best through, to, to the best, to the best of, of my knowledge, but <laughs> that's fine. It's, it's, I wasn't I wasn't here at that point, so it's before my my time on the. Since that, you've had no other concerns from history buffs on this. Is Not that concerning correct? this property, no, sir. Okay, thank you. Other questions, Ms. Perkins? Anyone? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. White, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Evan Wyatt with Greenway Engineering. Um, Candace uh, did a good job of covering the, uh, the meat of the rezoning, so I'm not gonna revisit a lot of that, um, other than to say that uh, we work fairly closely with planning and with transportation and with the county attorney uh, at the beginning of the process to make sure that the proffers that guided the development over time were accounted for with this specific rezoning, uh, as well as the additional proffers we added. Um, so the the proffers that are before you tonight are consistent uh, with everything that's been uh, promised throughout the development history of the project, and uh, we've added a couple other items with this specific request. Um, I think probably uh, to expand a little bit on Mr. Dunn's question, um, because I was around then. The, uh, the original rezoning in 2001, uh, the property, if you, if you noticed in my uh, packet that we put together, there's a map that shows historical issues and it shows the Stevenson's Depot battlefield. That actually comes out of the Civil War, uh, the Shenandoah Valley Civil War battlefield report. And what it does is it identifies areas within the community uh, that are deemed to be uh, potentially significant for battlefield. Now the report then goes to the next layer and it takes those areas and it defines portions that they believe have lost integrity and then areas that are still pristine. Because of the development around here in the Interstate 81 corridor, this area was deemed to be lost integrity. However, the original rezoning did go through the county's Historic Resources Advisory Board process and in one of the negotiations that came out of that, uh, if you notice in the front when you drive up Route 11, there is a separated entrance a little bit farther to the north from the stoplight. You can pull in there, there's a pull-off area, there's picnic tables, and there's three placard signs. And that's what was agreed to uh, be done uh, to satisfy uh, the Historic Resources Advisory Board's concerns with the battlefield portion in this area of the community. Um, now the, the areas up around in here are certainly deemed to be pristine and much more sought after by uh, groups like the Civil War Battlefield Preservation and, and Shenandoah Valley <coughs> National Battlefield, uh, and some of those lands have been acquired. Uh, but specifically to this property, it was ultimately addressed with the initial rezoning. There were proffers that were added to the pro development program, and they were performed with the original development. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more information there. Um, otherwise, uh, the purpose of the request, very simply, this portion to go to B2, uh, the, the scale and size of the property is really not conducive to industrial development. If you look at some of the commercial uh, projects that have gone on in Rutherford Cross, and you can see uh, just spatially that they would not fit on the property, let alone with parking. Uh, so to go to a B2 zoning gives us more opportunity for economic development, for uses that are more in scale with a retail component. And of course, everything that's on the, uh, on the west side of the railroad is intended to remain <coughs> industrial. And as Candace said in her report, uh, the proffer commitments for the Route 37, 350 foot wide corridor and for the interchange uh, that will link to 81 that's impacted by these properties is still part of the proffers. Um, so with that said, I'll be happy to answer any other questions the board may have. Questions for Mr. Wyatt? <coughs> Anyone? Mr. Dunn. Mr. Wyatt, thank you for, your, thank you for the um, history comment. I would, I'll support this. But going forward, if there's further discussion 
one, either acquisition or rezoning on the area to the east, the area that you had talked about. I'd like to either come back to the board and say this has been discussed or go to the historical community and just ask them to say, is this of concern to you? More than one, take a couple of historical items just to get that feedback. That would be helpful. I'd say the same thing to staff. If that becomes, if, if, there's, a, if there's a request for rezoning further to the east, at least let the board know this has been done. If the historical society signs off on it, that's fine. If they say no, we can still say yes or no, but at least I'd like to be aware of it before there would be a vote, board vote. Sure. Thank you. Other questions, comments from Mr. Wyatt? Anyone? Thank you, sir. Thank you. So as a public hearing, would anyone like to comment concerning these proposed rezonings? Anyone at all? Anyone? All right. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, um, this property lies in the Stonewall Magisterial District, and I would like to make a, a motion to approve rezoning number 03-17 for Rutherford Crossing. Second. Second. And motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Anyone? Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Fisher. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Supervisor Ewing. Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Thank you, sir. We'll bring us to an ordinance amendment, Frederick County Code, Chapter 165, Mr. Klein. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this is a public hearing for a proposed text amendment to Chapter 165, the zoning ordinance, to add medical offices as a conditional use in the RP residential performance and RA rural areas zoning districts. Staff has drafted an amendment to include medical offices as a conditional to use in the RA and RP zoning district, and we've also drafted new supplemental use regulations. The supplemental use regulations for medical offices would include excluding buffers and screening. The use and site shall adhere to and implement general business B2 zoning district design standards. Buffers and screening, including distance, opaque elements, and landscaping, shall be determined by the zoning administrator. The use must front on and be accessed via a collector or arterial roadway. The primary use of the structure shall be for the doctor's office, and the use shall not be located within a residential development or subdivision. Additional requirements could be added during the conditional use permit process as necessary. The Development Review and Regulations Committee discussed this amendment at their January 2017 meeting, and the Planning Commission held a public hearing for this item on June the 7th. At that public hearing, there were no public comments, and the Planning Commission recommended approval. Following a public hearing this evening, staff is seeking a decision from the Board of Supervisors regarding this proposed ordinance amendment, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions, Mr. Klein, anyone? Yes, sir, Supervisor Dunn. The board has a, or the, the county has a zoning ordinance. And in that zoning ordinance, this would ordinarily fit into a business, not a rural area um, category, correct? Correct, as the zoning ordinance currently exists, medical offices are permitted in the B1 and B2 district. Where this, this amendment was proposed by an applicant seeking to open a medical office chiropractor clinic in the RP zoning district. And so the question I'm posing, which did the, I'm posing is, why cannot those that need such an office stay inside the B2 or you rezone the whole area? I just I have a problem at this point in time with exceptions to the rule on the zoning issues. And so that's what, if you have any comments to make on that, I, I, I'd appreciate it. It's an opportunity to provide some flexibility. Um, Additionally, not every rezoning is supported by the zoning ordinance, or sorry, by the comprehensive plan. So in cases where they may seek a rezoning, it may not otherwise be appropriate based on the future land use plan. Additionally, um, the discussion at the Development Review and Regulations Committee and at the Planning Commission was to add it as a conditional use in the RA district, which would allow medical offices to be located closer to potential residences as opposed to you know some areas of the county where there are RA, you'd have to drive sometimes a great distance to get to a doctor's office. And, and this is meant to be not in a residential area, is that correct? It's meant not to be in an existing uh, subdivision or existing development. So I'm just using this hypothetical. Are we talking about then a person who has a home 
it's one home on you know 50 acres of land and people are coming to that home, i.e. it's a home-based business, or is it the construction of a new facility? It could be, it could be, um, it could be new construction, but it would not be where it was like a cottage <laughs> occupation where it's an accessory to a home. Um, as one of the supplemental use regulations that was included, the primary use of the structure shall be for a doctor's office or medical office. And that means you, you wouldn't get someone in their house trying to run a chiropractic clinic in a subdivision. And what type of traffic would then occur in the surrounding area? Um, 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 it's um, a, it's a, you know. It would be on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the size of the business, but in general, commercial type uses tend to generate more traffic than you know, a, a residence. And it's gonna cause, a, I guess I'm gonna ask, is it gonna cause a problem in the area that is proposed? This is a general item. So well, on I would Route 11, you know, you have plenty of traffic. So on another road, as part of the conditional use permit process, it would go through a review by planning and development staff and also VDOT staff. So at that time, they would evaluate what the impact to the surrounding road network would be. Um, because it's a conditional use, that also requires a public hearing before the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. So on a case-by-case -case basis, you all are going to be given the opportunity to evaluate the merits and or potential impacts of a medical office. Okay, so the last question, Mr. Chairman. So therefore, we would, if, the, if this passes, would allow, but then on a specific item, it still has to be addressed. Is that correct? Um, the, I don't know if I necessarily understand your comment. I would, I'd say the point is it's being added as a conditional use, so there'd still be an additional level of review at a later date and time should we receive a request to have a medical office in the RA or RP district. Be accepted or denied on the merits thereof? Correct. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Pine? Anyone? Thank you, sir. So is a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed use? Anyone at all? All right, we'll close the public hearing. I believe this is Stonewall. I would make a motion for approval of the ordinance amendment to Frederick County Code, Chapter 165, Zoning Article 4. Agriculture and Residential Districts, Part 401. I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. There's a second. Is there any discussion? Anyone? Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. All right. Other planning items? All right, I'm gonna abstain from this next discussion. Relinquish the chair to Vice Chairman Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next item is a, a resolution to allow transfer of development rights, TDRs, to be utilized for proper payments within the village at Middletown. Mr. Vice Chairman, of course, uh, we heard from Mr. Holliday uh, at the beginning of the meeting that he wishes to withdraw this particular item request. So uh, with the formalities that you just uh, concluded, I think we can move on to the next item, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, then we'll, we'll move on, Mr. Chairman, and I'll- Thank you, sir, well done. I'll turn it back <laughs> to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring us to other planning issues, discussion of slaughterhouses as a conditional use in the RA zoning district. Mr. Klein. Good evening again, Mr. Chair. This is a proposed amendment to Chapter 165 of the zoning ordinance to allow slaughterhouses in the rural areas zoning district. Currently, the manufacturing of meat products is only allowed in our M2 Industrial General Zoning District as a by right use. Staff has drafted a revision to the zoning ordinance to include slaughterhouses as a conditional use in the RA Zoning District. Draft, uh, we've also drafted a new definition for slaughterhouses and provided additional supplemental use regulations. I will add that this was a request brought to the Development Review and Regulations Committee by uh, an existing uh, slaughterhouse operator in the county, and they're also a resident. Additional supplemental use regulations for slaughterhouses would include all buildings, animal unloading and staging areas, and animal pens shall be a minimum of 100 feet from all property lines. The total building or building square footage should not exceed 20,000 square feet. All operations must be under roof and screened from view from adjoining properties and public streets and additional buffering and screening may be required as specified by the zoning administrator. 
The Development Review and Regulations Committee discussed this amendment at their April 2017 meeting, and the DRRC agreed with the proposed changes, and the item was forwarded to the Planning Commission for discussion. The Planning Commission discussed this item at their June 7th meeting and agreed with the proposed changes. This item is presented this evening for discussion purposes, and staff is seeking direction from the Board of Supervisors as to whether this item is ready to be sent forward for a public hearing. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Klein? Yes, Roger Klopp. Mr. Klein, I noticed in your definition we're talking about slaughtering or processing meat. So if, if someone opened up a, an establishment that processed deer or other animals that are killed in the field and dressed in the field and brought there, that's still considered a slaughterhouse. It would be if it's a commercial. If it's an individual, say an individual property owner is bringing kind of like a mobile butcher shop to their property, that would not fall under the definition of slaughterhouse. That would still be allowed. Um, it's very specific that it is a commercial level type facility. Okay, thank you. <coughs> other questions of Mr. Klein? Anyone? Mr. Chairman, and Fish. further clarify this for me. I'm still not clear that we have evidently a number of operations going on that are just not defined for use in the RA areas. You are correct. We do have a few um, existing slaughterhouse operations in the county. Currently, they're operating under what's known as a legally non-conforming use, which means that they don't fall under a category that's currently allowed in the zoning ordinance, but they've been in operation for a number of years and they can continue to operate as they currently exist. Um, at such time that they would come forward for any type of change, um, whether that be an expansion or modification to their facilities, um, there's certain provisions within the legally non-conforming use um, part of the ordinance which would allow them to expand. Uh, they can either expand up to 50% or not to exceed 2,000 square feet. Um, the applicant that brought this forward is seeking to expand their property, expand their current operation across a property line. They're also looking at a potential second location within the county, uh, which makes it problematic for them to expand given uh, the legally non-conforming use requirements. But a, a deer process, in the fall, a deer processing facility, they just put up a sign, and but they charge to do it. Would that fall under this? No, sir, because those would be individuals bringing, you know, one or two. And Mr. Chairman, if I may add to that, also we have cottage occupations that exist in the county in the rural areas that already permit that. Um, several individuals have gone through that process okay. to allow them to do exactly trying, what you're talking about. Trying to determine if we have a number that I see, you know, that are there that are going to have to do something or oh. you're kind of telling me that they're already... There are a number that have come through through the cottage occupation process to set up uh, okay. exactly what you're talking about associated with a residential uh, setting in the rural areas predominantly. Okay. All right. Thank and, you. Th and those users and the, and the other slaughterhouses that I mentioned that are currently in operation would not be affected by this amendment unless they came forward to do any type of an expansion. Okay. So you described the ability to expand. Would you expand a bit on that? You said they were proposing to expand across the property line. Um, both, uh, both properties held by the same owner. I believe they're seeking to acquire an adjacent property and expand. Um, I don't believe the applicant is here this evening, but they will be present at the public hearing, and I'd be happy to uh, work with them to make sure that they can provide any clarification. Um, I do understand they've been in operation for a number of years. Um, that, that arbiter has been there ever since I can remember. Yep, and they're, they're very happy with their current location, and, but and, I think... And the current scale is not a problem. Yeah, it, and they... It, it is what happens when folks want to expand that problems begin to occur. And they did work closely with the committee on the supplemental uses, so they're very comfortable with that. Uh, we also worked and reached out to some neighboring jurisdictions and like jurisdictions to get some additional input on how they treat slaughterhouses. Um, so what you see in the text amendment is something that um, is, con is appropriate for the user in the county currently and also is consistent with what's being seen around the state. Mr. Chairman, just an observation, yes. much like the previous amendment, this is also a conditional use permit, so if anybody were to pursue this, it would require a public hearing and it would be up to the board's discretion based on the particulars of the circumstance as to whether or not you felt it was appropriate. I'm not convinced, <laughs> but I appreciate the comment. Other comments? To staff or- Rather done. 
I read this and I have just have some problems with it. My questions to you, Mr. Klein, are currently where would where could, under current situations, do you do it? I mean, I, I, you, you've indicated that there's, this is going on now in an RA area. So how are they operating now in an RA area for a, for, for a process that is not deemed in an RA area? Well, existing users are legally non-conforming. So wherever they're established now, they can continue to operate as they are currently doing. Other than those that are already in existence, if a new user wanted to come in and set up a slaughterhouse under the current ordinance, they would have to be in the M2 Industrial General Zoning District. So this started long before the area was zoned for that? It preceded zoning ordinance right, in the Commonwealth. So, so <laughs> correct, way, yes. Way. Okay, I mean, obviously, there are some members that are much more familiar with this than I am, so I'm just asking the question. So it's preceding that. Um, I don't know the volume, et cetera. I know that when reading this before tonight's meeting, I just have some concerns on a commercial entity, whether slaughtering chickens, whether slaughtering cattle, et cetera. In my opinion, that ought to be done in an area designated for that and not put into an area that's RA. Mr. Fisher has made some examples of deer slaughtering. Whether that's one or two deer, I can live with that. If it's a 1,000 deer, I'd have a question on that. And so maybe there's some exceptions to existing operations on a certain scale? Well, uh, when you look at the supplemental use regulations, we do impose a limit on the scale. Um, we have a requirement on the total square footage that would be allowed for the, for the physical that. buildings. Uh, we have requirements for the setbacks, uh, which could be greater than the setbacks that may otherwise be required on the property. Uh, requirement for the facility to be under roof and uh, for full screening from adjacent properties. So um, the committee and the planning commission at least felt like the, require the supplemental use regulations that were being included with this text amendment were appropriate for the type of use that was being sought after. Again, it's a conditional use as, as um, Mr. Tierney stated, so you would have the opportunity to review each case uh, individually based on the merits of that application and also the surrounding properties. I guess, yeah. uh, thank you, you've answered my question, thank you. Other questions, Mr. Klein, anyone? How would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, I'd recommend we send this forward to public hearing. I believe that's what this is about. Yes, sir. And I just want to assure Mr. Dunn that uh, I can't legally kill a thousand deer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion to send forward second. to public hearing and a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Supervisor um, Dunn. Mr. Fisher may or may not be able to kill a thousand deer. I, j I just have some problems with it at this point in time. Um, so I'll pr probably oppose this. Um, I think they should be in an area designated for it. If there were exceptions for existing situations, which you know were mentioned, a person that's coming in and saying, fine, I'll just do this for you know two days or five days to take care of Mr. Fisher's deer kill, I could probably live with that. but. To have a commercial operation that, walk, that moves in and says, fine, if this goes through, I will set up a major slaughterhouse. I have a problem with that, so therefore I'm going to probably vote no. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Nay. Nay. Motion carries. We'll send it forward to public hearing. That brings us to board liaison reports. Are there any? Hearing none. Citizen comments on any issue whatsoever. Is there anything anyone would like to share with the board? Seeing none. Board of Supervisors comments. Are there any? Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Dunn. We had a um, budget discussion earlier this evening, and I would just like to encourage the um, school board to put together what they need in the next five years with dollars sooner rather than later. So as we go through on a budget situation, we can see what the expected requests are going to be from the school board. Um, I've been told that might occur by October. If that can occur sooner, that would be helpful. Same request for the, for the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Anyone? Vice Chairman Fisher. Move for adjournment, Mr. Chairman. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. We'll stand adjourned. We certainly thank everyone for their time and attention. Yeah.